So we know about empirical probability, which is calculated from data. So you look at data, you look at real life experiments, things you can see and smell and touch, and you create numbers off of that that you can find probabilities from. But now we want to look at the other big kind of probability, the other main method we're going to use, which is the classical method. Now classical probability is when you find, and again, our book is using a frequentist definition, which is fine. So it's the relative frequency of an event based on theory. You just hypothetically imagine the experiment would be re replicated infinitely many times, and you just imagine what that probability would be using logic. Now it seems really tricky, and it actually can get tricky. This is um, can start off very, very simple, but can get much harder than empirical probabilities quite quickly. You can spend semesters after semester just playing around with classical probabilities. Now to give you an example of how this works before we get into that next example, I want to go back to the first example from this section. So I'm going to scroll back up to this example, the American Roulette Wheel. And you can see right here in part C, when we wanted to find the probability of 4, we didn't actually get out a wheel, put a ball into it, and start spinning it around time after time after time to get some percentage of times that would land on four divided by all the times it was spun, period. That's what empirical would be. You'd actually have to physically get, a, if not, um, to get a wheel that you could spin. Well, we didn't do that, right? We just kind of imagined a roulette wheel look, there's a lovely diagram to kind of help you imagine a roulette wheel. You imagine that all the spots were equally likely. You imagine everything was fair. You kind of looked at it and said, hey, the four is right there. There's only one four spot. There's 38 spots total. I imagine in my head that it's going to be one out of 38. Now, is it actually going to be that if I went and spun the wheel? Eh, no, but it should be close to that. We'll talk about that more later. But you're doing a very, very simple classical probability when you do this because you're just kind of imagining what the roulette wheel would work like. That's classical probability. So dice, cards, roulette, um, these are the classic tools that we use to define classical probability. In fact, the two great mathematicians that invented the rules of probability that we know and love and are learning about in this section, they were um, gamblers, both of them, Cardano and Bernoulli, and they didn't tell anybody about all the things that they figured out. So they figured out the rules of probability based on gambling, um, that because they were gambling with cards, dice, roulette, and so on, and neither one of them published until after their death. So they used their knowledge of gambling and assuming equally likely outcomes and so on um, to be able to basically milk their friends out of money so that they could have a living for their lives kind of fun. So um, the classical probabilities assume those gambling ideas. Now we'll stretch that later, but for right now that's what we're doing. So we're going to assume equally likely. Um, you assume the game is fair, you assume all outcomes have the same probability, and again we'll tweak this a little bit later, but for right now this will work for us. So not only does it work for roulette, it'll work for the standard 52 card poker deck. So this is a standard poker deck. It has aces, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up through jacks, queens, and kings. There's four suits, spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. And you don't have to memorize this. It's on your um, exam notes packet, but you do have to know how to work with them. You don't have to use them, so I know some people don't want to play cards. It's against their religion to gamble. That's fine, but you have to understand the ideas behind them because those ideas are ideas we use to make big leaping off points for statistical topics. All right, so let's look through this list. We want to find the probability of a nine of diamonds. Well, the nine of diamonds is right here. So I gave her kind of a little orange box. So the nine of diamonds is right there. So the probability of a nine of diamonds is one out of 52 because there are 52 cards total in a standard poker deck and there's only one nine of diamonds. Now the one thing I could do to you is I could add a joker into the mix. There's two jokers in most decks, one red, one black, or maybe both black or something like that. So that's the way I can augment this problem, kick it up a notch. All right, so the nine of diamonds is one out of 52. Now the probability of black cards, it, the spade suit and the club suit are black. So that would mean there's 26, because 13 and 13 is 26, 26 out of 52, or in other words, it's a half, right? A half of the deck is black, or 0.5 if you want to think of it that way, 
Any one of those would work. Now an ace card. Aces are the ones in the card world. So um, they can be sometimes high, sometimes low, sometimes they count as a one, sometimes they count as higher than a king. It just depends on what game you're playing. So these are the aces right here. Let me make it a different color so you can see it. I'll pop them in green. There we go. So those are the aces, and you can see there's four of them. So that would be four out of 52, which is one over 13. Either one of those is fine. And again, if you want a decimal, you can do that too, if you so desire. I'm just not going to bother. We all know how to grab a calculator and type four divided by 52. There they are. Then there's the face cards. Face cards are cards literally with faces, like eyes, noses, and so on. That is the jacks, the queens, and the kings. Those are the face cards. So you can see that in the face cards, there's 12 of them out of 52 total. So that would be 12 out of 52 is the probability. Or that reduces to 3 out of 13. And again, if you so desire, you can find a decimal for it no problem. And again, I'm highlighting these because some people don't know the card decks very well, so I just want to make sure it's really clear. Now a red spade. Well, spades are the top row. Those are spades. And you can see that they're black. So that would mean that it's impossible to find a red spade. So that would mean the probability is equal to zero. So just for the record, impossible doesn't mean that there isn't a probability. There is. It's zero. Sometimes students get confused and think if it's impossible, then there isn't a probability for it. And that is not the case. There is. It's zero. Now, if aces are low and kings are high, which is kind of how I've put this together here. Um, I, actually, I think I stole it from my um, the textbook's author. So aces low, kings high. Then what's the chance of an ace or higher? Well, all of the cards are aces or higher, so the probability would be 100%. It would be 1, 52 out of 52. So that's that one. Which has led us to a couple rules before I go any further. Impossible events have a probability of 0. Certain events have a probability of 1. And that will come up um, not in the next page, but a little uh, the page afterwards. So just make a note of that a little bit in your head. So impossible events will be a probability of zero and certain events will be a probability of one. Now all these probabilities are classical because we didn't conduct an experiment with a deck of cards and draw the cards ourselves. We just kind of imagined drawing a deck, right? You kind of imagine drawing a card out of a deck of cards and you kind of think, well, there's 52 and they're all equally likely. Um, so you're making assumptions, right? So, and that's fine as long as you're not playing against, well, I don't know, somebody who's a professional, you know, card magician. So if you're not playing against a magician, you should be fine. So the deck of cards, um, and they draw the cards themselves. We just assumed each card was equally likely based on the makeup of the deck. So we did not draw, or we don't have a data set of to draw the probabilities from. We only used our minds and the problem setup. 